Let us start with Mr. Garamandis, if you'll forgive me, Minister. For I don't, hope there are no protocol issues at work here. I, I don't know whether ministers come after commissioners or before commissioners, whether it's ladies first or whatever. But anyway, the floor now is yours. So up to you. Over to you. Thank you so much. I, I think it's always ladies first. Uh, but since the commissioner is is not um, is not here, I will be more than uh, happy to begin uh, with my brief remarks. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Andrews. Um, I would like also to thank The Economist for inviting me to this uh, virtual event. And I would also like to congratulate the hosts, both for the flawless organization and the excellent agenda of this uh, forum. It is our firm belief in the Mitsotakis government that while facing numerous challenges of the pandemic, uh, public dialogue should primarily focus on how to prepare the country and the world for the day after. I'm very glad to be given the opportunity to talk about Greece's role in the post-COVID world, in the logistics sector, more generally, and in Europe's uh, supply chain. After a decade of hardship uh, due to the economic crisis and then to the pandemic, to, to the pandemic Greece uh, gradually uh, has uh, regained uh, its natural role as one of the leading powers in Southeastern Europe. Uh, connectivity, I think we will all agree, is the foundation upon uh, which the economy is built, with transport providing the means for movement for both people and goods, as well as stimulating growth on both a national and international level. I think that it goes without saying that the COVID pandemic has disrupted global supply chains and has highlighted the need to invest in infrastructure and achieve digital transformation much uh, faster than expected. At the same time, it has created a number of opportunities for Greece uh, to build on the progress that has already been made to be recognized as an international freight center in this redesigned global supply chain. In the view of the years to come, Greece needs to continue increasing its marketing and branding efforts in order to become the getaway to Central and Southeastern European markets. All of our government efforts are focused on transforming Greece into a competitive intermodal corridor for European trade, mainly connecting the markets of Southeast Asia with the ones in Europe. The port of Piraeus, which is the biggest port uh, here in Greece, is playing this role already. However, we need to upgrade our infrastructure in order to enhance this role. It is a well-known fact that every crisis, either economic or of other nature, presents a number of opportunity. And in this framework, the EU Recovery and Resilience Fund constitutes a unique chance for our country's growth and development. As most of our viewers are probably aware of, the European Commission has recently endorsed Greece's 30.5 billion recovery and resilience plan, dispersing 17.8 billion in grants and 12.7 billion in loans over the 2021 to 2026 period. These tools are very important and will support the implementation and the implementation of the crucial investments and reforms uh, that have been outlined in Greece's uh, recovery and resilience plan. It will play a key role in, in enabling Greece to emerge stronger from the COVID-19 pandemic. When it comes to transport, 
logistics and more broadly speaking, multimodality, we aim to transform Greece in a logistic hub of the greater area of Eastern Mediterranean. But how can we achieve this ambitious target? By implementing a comprehensive plan, which mainly has three pillars. First, we are transforming the Piraeus port and the ports of Northern Greece, mainly the ports of Thessaloniki, Alexandrupoli and Kavala, into entry gates and subsequently upgrade Greece in the logistics sector. The Piraeus port is an entry port and a transshipment port for goods coming from the Suez Canal. The port of Thessaloniki can also become a getaway port for goods from the southeastern European region. The interconnectivity between the ports of Thessaloniki, Kavala and Alexandrupoli, and between Alexandrupoli and the Black Sea can geopolitically upgrade the whole region of northern Greece and create a number of opportunities for the region in general. Secondly, we are developing a railway network which can enhance the maritime corridor connecting the A Asian markets to the Piraeus port to a land corridor of goods transport to Central Europe. We are implementing the biggest rail project that has ever been planned in the country, amounting to 3.3 billion euros. Let me dwell, if I may, on this for a moment. Our country has, at now, a highway and road network which is at par to that of the developed countries of Europe. However, our railway networks lag significantly behind. In addition, due to our country's geography, railway projects are difficult and in some cases extremely complex. For Greece, therefore, the existence of a reliable railway network is of, utmost, is of the utmost importance. This is why it is time for the new generation of big projects to include railway projects. These railway projects are environmentally friendly, promote safety, are better organized, and are more suitable for bulky and heavy goods. Thirdly, we are upgrading our regional airports as well as the smaller ports in our many islands. And in order to achieve this goal, to transform Greece into international logistics hub, it is necessary to invest smartly in the infrastructure sector, which also has a big multiplier effect for our national GDP. We are moving, therefore, forward with a comprehensive 13 billion euro plan for infrastructure projects, mainly financed by structural funds from the European Union. This plan includes projects that have been stalled for years due to various and complex issues, but are absolutely necessary and can transform Greece in the next years. Projects such as the Thessaloniki subway, the Voak highway in Crete, one of the largest road projects, if not the largest in the EU, and the Patra Pyrgos highway, the E65 highway completion, and of course, the Athens Metro Line 4, the biggest public work project in Greece, whose const construction contract was signed just yesterday. At the same time, we are proceeding with a number of new projects. The Attiki Odos extension, the Thessaloniki flyway, the railway projects I mentioned, which are worth of 3.3 billion, anti-flooding protection projects, which amount to 1.2 to 1.5 billion euros, and road safety interventions to over 7,000 dangerous spots all over our country's road network, 
a program which is financed by the EIB. In this new challenging global environment, Greece leveraging its strategic geographical location along with increasing investment in, un in upgrading our transportation and logistics infrastructure has gone a long way towards becoming a regional logistic hub. The journey for Greece has already begun with our country taking pivotal steps towards sustainable growth and success. We hope that over the coming years, Greece will reach its full potential as a leading global freight and logistics hub. After a decade of decline, crisis and economic austerity, I think that we can all agree that Greece is back. Thank you very much for your attention and I am looking uh, forward to our discussion that will follow.